In today's video, I am going to show you how you can perform genome mapping using Bowtie 2. And so what we are going to do is to map these to a reference genome. And after that, we are going to visualize the mapped data. Now, this video was made using tutorial from the UTexas websites. And this is the page. I will leave the link to this page in the description box. I saw it uh, last week and I said that, um, hey, this tutorial looks cool and it's easy to um, reproduce. So I will just do that for the viewers to also learn. So that's about it. Now, with this tutorial, if you want to follow it, if you want to reproduce it, you need to make sure you have a Unix like operating system, i.e., Linux or macOS. In addition, you should have the following tools installed. You should have Bowtie 2 installed. You should also have some tools installed and you should also have IGV installed. Instructions for installing these three tools are available in the description box. So just use the instructions there to set up your PC. In addition, you can read more about these tools by visiting their respective web pages. Bowtie 2 and then some tools. Um, the developers have a like, GitHub pages for them so you can check um, those pages out i will leave those links in the description box i give you also has a website you can go and then check it out and read more about it so and that's about it so make sure you set up your pc so let's continue and so with this tutorial it also comes with example data sets so we will use the data here to um, do the exercise so yeah, it's um, an E. coli genome sequence data. So that's what we are going to do. And the session number is here. So we will use that to download the FASTQL files. There's also a GeneBank file here, which um, with this tutorial, I will not use it. I'll rather use the first A file and the GFF3 because here there is a script that converts uh, the GeneBank file to first A and then GFF3. FM formats. So instead of using that particular script to do that, I will just download the um, first here and then the GFF um, file. So that's about it. So let's continue. So let's first um, download the data. So we'll go to ENA, European Nucleotide Archive. So I'll leave the link to this page in the description box. When you are here, just scroll down and then you see the section where you can download the FASTQL file. So uh, the data we are using is a paired end data. So that means we will need the R1 and R2. That is read one and then read two. So I have them here. So I will download them. Now the download, you can click it. If you want to use a browser, you can just click it and then you'll be asked to save it. Okay. But for me, I'll use the command line. So I'll get the download links and then download from the terminal. So I'll start with one. Okay, I'll start with read one. So I'll right click and then get the link. And then I'll go to my terminal. Okay, so I am there on my terminal. So I'll just say make the mapping. And then I'll cd into it. Perfect. And then I'll download the data. So I'll say we get and then I'll just supply it with a download link for the read one. Okay, so the read one has been downloaded. Let's download the read two. So we are going to guess the download link. So I'll right click, I'll copy the link, and I'll go back to the terminal. I am on the terminal now, so I'll just. Um, use we get again and then I'll supply it with a download link. Okay, so the read two has also been downloaded. Let's check the files out. Let's do an ls. We'll find the files there. Perfect. Let's proceed. We are now going to download the reference sequence. So the reference sequence has this accession number. So if you want to check, if you want to search it um, on the NCBI database, you have to use this accession number. But I have, but I already have it open here, so we don't need to search. So I will leave this link in the description. So just use that and it will send you straight to 
the page where you will download the reference sequence. So we are going to download the first A file and we are also going to download the GFF file. These are the two files we are going to download. So on this page, just go to send to on the right side. So click on file and then with the formats, you will select fast A. That's the first one we will download. So you can download on your PC and then you can also rename it. So I'll say E. coli dot fast A. And then you can also download the GFF, the same approach file, but the format you select GFF3. Yeah, so just click on create file and then save it. I will still use the same equally, but the extension is different. Okay, so these are the files. Okay, there is another way to download using the terminal, but I will skip that one. So try and then use your browser to download. You can download all these sequences using Python, but that's something that's uh, fully covered. So let's keep it simple. Okay, so we have whatever we need. Everything we need is available now. So let's proceed. So let's go to the original tutorial, which is here. Okay, so we have all those stuff here. So let's go down. I'll skip some stuff here. I'll move straight to the mapping part. Okay, so when we go to the mapping part, uh, let's check here. We'll create a directory. Which I've already done and then place um, the files in it. So that one we will skip it. And then we also need to index the reference genome or the reference sequence, which we will do using this command here. Okay. But if you click this side, the actual command, the entire command for indexing the reference sequences here. So this is what we are going to use. Now, if you are dealing with fast scale files, okay. Um, you, it's important you perform QC, quality control. That means you, you um, inspect the quality of the reads and you also uh, perform quality training. But for this tutorial, I will skip um, the quality control because the focus of this tutorial is to show you how to map genomes. But in your data sets, if you, are, if, you, if you want to apply this on your data set, you need to make sure you have performed quality control. It's very, very important you do that. Okay. And I repeat again, this tutorial, I will only perform the mapping and visualization part. The quality control, I'll skip it because that is not the focus of this tutorial. But make sure if you want to apply this um, this tutorial or if you want to uh, reproduce this tutorial using your data set, you try and then perform quality control. Okay, so let's proceed. So let's um, go back to our terminal. We will come back to this page later on. Okay, so we are back to the terminal. So I'll do an ls again. And then I also have these files here. These are the ones that I downloaded, the reference sequence. I made sure to download and then store these files also in the mapping directory. Okay, so that's why when I do an ls, I find everything here. So try and also put all these files in the same directory. I will organize my files a bit. So I'll create another directory called ref. So I'll say make that ref. Then I'll move these two files there. So I'll say equali star. And then I'll move them to ref. Okay. So basically I'm moving all files that um, have um, their names beginning with equali. Okay. I'm moving them to this directory called ref. So now if I do an ls, there's the ref directory. When I do an ls into it, I will have my two files there. Perfect. So now we are ready to go. I am now going to build the index. Okay, I will generate uh, the index uh, for the reference uh, sequence. So I will use this command. It's called bowtie to build. Now let's check the command again from the tutorial. So let's do that. So if you look at the tutorial, this is the command. It says both I2 build, and then it specify the first A file where it is located. Okay. And you also specify where you want to 
save the uh, index file the uh, file that you are indexing so we are going to do basically the same thing so here we are using a different name so this part will change so let's go back and then proceed so what i'm going to do is to create another directory called index and then that is where i will store my index file so i will say make the index and then i will build my index so i'll say bow tie to build and then i'll specify the reference sequence which is ref slash equali dot fast a and then i'll specify where the index file should be stored so i'll say index slash equali And then I'll run this command. Okay, so indexing has now been done. So let's check. So if I do an ls, I have my index directory. So I'll do an ls interact and I'll find my files there. Okay, so I have everything I need. Perfect. Now we are going to perform the mapping. So let's check the command that was used for the genome mapping okay so on this page if you scroll down the command that was used is somewhere here uh, let's check it here somewhere here so this is the command okay so we call bow tie and then we specify the index and then we also specify read one and then read two and we also specify the output file now the dash t here we are not going to use it in this tutorial we don't need it anyway but if you want to put it there that's fine but we don't need it so i wouldn't add that so let's go back to our terminal and then continue with the exercise okay before i proceed with the mapping i'll create another directory so i say make the mapped so this is where the map data will be saved i'll now perform the mapping so i'll say bow tie 2 and i'll say dash x and i'll say index slash e coli and then i say dash 1 is what srr 1.fastq.gz and then dash 2 is srr Q.gz and I say dash s and then I will specify the output file so dash s here is used to specify the name of the output file both I2 will generate a sum file okay and so we need to specify the name and that's what we are doing here so dash s we say mapped slash e coli dot sum and then we will run it now you can speed up both i2 by specifying traits okay so um, if you have a pc with uh, um, a lot of course a lot of cpus you can um, use that um, you can use the flag traits to um, increase it so we can say dash dash traits and so here i will use eight threads if you have more you can increase this number so that's fine now we can run it so let's do it now okay so both i2 will start the mapping so let's wait whilst everything has been done okay mapping has been done Whenever bow tie completes a mapping activity, it also uh, gives us a summary of what has happened. And so here we have some statistics here. We are dealing with paired and reads. So bow tie also tells us the percentage of the reads that were paired. So here it says 
we also have some information here that we can read to uh, get uh, more insight into the mapping activity but i will want us to focus on this one here which is the overall alignment rates both i says it's 95.12 percent which is high so that means things are looking good now let's proceed we are going to explore the output file so let's clear the screen first okay let's do an ls into the map directory so i will say ls mapped and we are going to see this file here which is the output file this is a sum file it contains alignment records what we are going to do next is to convert this sum file into a bam file sum files are usually large okay so the sizes of the sum files are large so in order to save space we always convert to a bam file bam files usually occupy less space so let's convert this file so to convert we will use some tools so we say some tools view dash b and we also say dash o to specify the output file so the output file will be mapped slash e coli dot spam and we indicate the input file which is the sum file so that will be mapped slash e coli dot sum so let's run this command okay we have converted a sum file to a bam file so if you check the sizes you notice the difference let's do an ls into the map directory first and you will see the bam file also here okay so that's what we are going to use so once you are done with the conversion you can even delete the sum file but i will leave it for now after generating your BAM file, you can also check the mapping statistics. Some tools allow us to do that. Okay, so we are going to check the mapping statistics. So we say some tools flag stats and we specify the BAM file. So we say mapped slash E. coli dot BAM. And we run it. So this will display the mapping statistics for us. Okay, that has also been done. Notice this number here. This is what we got when we performed the mapping. Okay, this is what was displayed to us by both I2. So it tells us what was mapped. Okay. Aside the mapping statistics, we can also filter the alignment records okay both some files both the sum file and then the bam file all contain alignment records okay so for the dance room analysis we use the bam file because it's 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 smaller okay the size is smaller okay and so what you can also do is to filter the alignment records for example you can decide to filter the reads so that only reads with made pairs uh, also map into the reference sequence or reference genome um, are used for a downstream analysis you can also filter by mapping quality okay there are other criteria that you can also use to filter but these are things that i have covered in another tutorial and i'll uh, prepare another tutorial where i go into details with the filtering okay so you can watch that first video by using the link in the description box to um, look at how to filter alignment records in a bam file okay and you can use some tools to do that you can also use bam tools to do that now let's proceed we have our bam file which is here okay but some programs require that we sort the bam file okay so what we are going to do next is to sort this bam file let's clear the screen and continue so we are going to sort using some tools now with the sorting you can sort by name you can also sort by coordinates some tools by default uses the coordinate system okay but you can also specify another option so that some tools sort by name for this is where we are going to sort by coordinates so we say some tools 
sorts i also indicate the number of threads which is eight and i will specify the output file which is mapped slash equali dot sorter dot bam this will be the output file and then we specify the input file which will be mapped slash equali dot bam we are sorting so let's sort now okay sorting has been done so if you do an ls into the mapped directory you'll find another file called e coli sorted on bam notice the dot sorted name here okay i added this so that the name of this file will be different from the bam file here i always try to um use a naming convention so that i am able to keep track of whatever is happening and so it's always important that you have this naming convention it can also help you to avoid accidentally modifying files okay so this is the sorted bam file and that's what we are going to use for a downstream analysis some programs also require that you index the bam file that you are going to use so we are going to index our bam file the sorted bam file we will use some tools to do that so to index a bam file you need to make sure you have that bam file and so here we are using this bam file okay so to index we say some tools and we specify index and then we also specify the bam file which should be mapped slash equali dot sorted dot bam so let's run this command perfect that has also been done so if you do an ls into the map directory you'll find another file which ends with dot bai so this means that this bam file has been indexed so now we are ready to go so we are done with the genome mapping after mapping your race to a reference sequence uh, you can also inspect you can visualize this bam file okay you can use tools like igv okay so we are now going to visualize the map data using igv but before that let's index the reference sequence okay we have our reference sequence here the first a file which is in this directory so we are going to index it using some tools so i'll say some tools fit x and then i'll say ref slash e coli dot first a perfect it has been indexed so let's do an ls into ref and you find this dot fai also there okay perfect so now we are done with mapping so we are going to visualize using igv so make sure you also have igv installed okay I already have mine installed, so I'm going to open it now. So I'll say IGV dot sh, and then I'll open IGV. Perfect. IGV has been opened. We are going to load the BAM file here, okay? And we are also going to load the reference sequence so if you have your igv opened you may probably see this or you may see another uh, reference sequence being loaded here but we are going to load it um, we are going to load our own reference sequence and then the bam file okay so mine is here so these are my files and then if I go to mapped, I have my BAM file here. Okay, this is what I am going to load. And I also have my reference sequence here. Okay, I'm going to load both. So I'll go back to IGV and then load them. Okay, so when we are here, if you want to load the reference sequence, you come to genomes and then you go to load from file. And then you select 
your genome okay i'm going to select my reference you know which is this one here so i have loaded the reference sequence now I will also open the file okay so i will go to file and then i go to load from file and i, I will load my bam file which is here okay the bam file has been opened if the bam file is opened you will see the name on the left side here we have the name of the bam file and then this test that's coverage and then when you come to this side you also see the name of the bam file there uh, you may see a blank window here okay uh, this is the default behavior of igv and so what you have to do is to zoom in then you'll be able to see the alignment to zoom in just come to the top right you see these two buttons minus and then plus okay so by default the alignments have been zoomed out completely so you have to zoom in so you have to use the plus button so just click it or you can also look at this bar here this blue bar here click it and then just drag it to the right side so you can drag it to the right side and then the alignments will be zoomed in for you so that's about it okay now let's look at the data here now on the top we have coverage information and then in the middle we have the alignment records and then when you come to this side you see the sequence so this is the reference sequence that's what you have here so we have the sequence so we have the individual basis here okay now if you look at what we have here these uh, that i call tracks each of these represents a read let me use an example here so let's say i want a shorter one okay let's just say this one here okay let me just yeah so each of these here is a read okay so uh, these reads have been mapped to a regions of the reference sequence so you will see them like this okay so you will see that some of them have been given a color gray some of them have also been given um, red we have blue here okay igv by default uh, gives colors to interesting events if there is no interesting events then the color is gray if there are interesting events then you have colors for them for example uh, this red color here for this read indicates a possible deletion then this one indicates a possible insertion i'll leave some useful links in the description that you can use to read more about how igv displays results and how you can interpret bam files so um, just check the description box you'll find some links there okay aside the colors of the reads themselves you also see that we have some nucleotides here okay or some bases I'm using these two words interchangeably here. So you will see some of them here and they are also colored. They are colored because they are interesting events. Okay, so let, why are they colored and why are they interesting? Let's take a look at this one here. There's one that I want. Okay, let's look at this one here because it's, yeah. If you look at this one here, the reference sequence has what A at that position, but here it's C. So there's a different base here, and that is why it's interesting. There was a change, okay? So interesting events here refer to changes in the um, sequences, the data that you have. So this is the data, our data. At this position, it's C, but on the reference genome, it's A at that position. So that is why this one is scarlet, okay? So to tell you that there was an interesting event. So here, the event is that there's a mismatch. That's about it. So with the colors here, with the colors here, it can be given in different shades. Yeah, so the colors here are given in different shades. So if the color is light, it indicates a low quality. If the color is thick or given in, in, in a bolded form, then it indicates a high quality. So how do we check the quality for each of these bases? So click it. And then 
you have this information coming up so this information here you have the mapping quality you also have the base quality here so you can use that to check the quality scores and then see which ones are low and which ones are high so that's about it if you click and you don't see anything then you may want to change the behavior so just come to the top this one here which says modify pop-up text behavior in data panels and click on it so when you click you have this so mine by default shows details on click but you can change by selecting other ones as well so uh, just try and then use this one for now so that we can click and then see the detail okay so that's about it now you will see that we have some places which are still white i will say they are blank because there's nothing there so uh, this means that no reads map to those regions there was no read okay so this color is different from this one here is gray because reads were mapped to that region but here there are no reads so it's blank that's what you should know okay so that's about it now let's look at another thing here let's check the coverage information so this side here is the coverage so we have the information for each nucleotide or each base we have them here and you can see that um, some are higher than others okay so each of these represents the sum of reads that map to that position that's what this one indicates so if let's say you compare two of them let's say you are comparing this and this we see that one is higher than the other that means that uh, the one which is higher had more reads mapping to that position compared to this one here so that is why there's that change so this tells you the coverage information so it's important to also look at the coverage as well so that's about it now this is an intro so i will not give detailed explanation for the um, igv um, output here but that's what i also see if let's say there is a mismatch let's just say you want to identify snips here there is a mismatch all right but then if you look at the other reads uh, they remain unchanged okay we have gray throughout that means that if it's gray that means that it's still a, 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 a here and it's only this one that is c and some of them to no reads map there at all so here this cannot be a true snip or a true variance okay because it's just one of them usually we need to make sure that we have the same observation across all the reads here and then we can use that to make a decision in addition to the quality that you have here so you can use that and that will help you to identify um snips okay true snips okay so even though there's a mismatch we cannot say for sure that this is a snip because we need to also consider what is happening on all the other reads as well so uh, this is something that i thought i also bring it up so that you don't um, use just one observation here to decide whether there's a snip or not so that's about it so that's about it i will be making other tutorials on how to use igv to visualize data and i'll go into details okay igv can also be used to visualize gen bank files and then gff files so i just try your hands on all these data sets and then look at what can be done now in addition to visualizing your bank file in igv you can also use some tools to um, generate mapping statistics to just have an idea of what happened after that you can also perform variant calling if let's say you are dealing with whole genome sequence or whole exome sequence then you can perform variant calling you can use tools like gatk bcf tools free bias etc to identify variants i have a playlist that has some videos on variant calling, so i will show that at the end of this tutorial so just check those videos out if you are dealing with let's say rna seq data then after you have your bam file after you have generated your bam file you can also um, count your reads quantify the reads and then perform your um, differential expression analysis using tools like the seq2 
edge eye exercise so that's that's something that you can also do after you have uh, performed your genome mapping now with the genome mapping there are other tools that you can use you can also use bwa to perform genome mapping i've covered this tutorial and that's i will leave the playlist also at the end of this video so just check that one out i'll also be making tutorials on how to use star and then high tool for mapping RNA secrets to reference sequence so make sure you come back to this channel and watch those tutorials as well so that's about it for now thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next session goodbye